everything's always better with fire. On this episode, we're gonna start the 3D scanning. We're gonna get all the engine bay scanned in the tunnel, chuck that into the software, clean it up, throw it across into Fusion 360, and we're gonna start doing the design work on the battery boxes, the motor mount, gearbox positioning, etc. I'm also gonna have the fun job of dropping the subframes, stripping off all the arms, removing the bushes, and then starting to clean everything up and get it all painted, ready for our polycyclic bushes that we're gonna be fitting in the next episode. So, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and carry on watching. Here we go. So this is Will from Cage Laser Engineering. He's gonna do the 3D scanning on the MX-5 today. Hand you over to Will now, he's gonna explain a little bit about the scanner, how it works, and then we're gonna get started. So, as Chris said, my name is Will, I work for Cage Laser Engineering. Um, we're based near Radstock, we do fabrication, 3D design and 3D scanning. Um, we use a Artec Leo 3D scanner, um, it's their flagship model, uh, it's so easy to use, it's brilliant to be fair. It comes with a screen on the back so there's no need for a laptop or any wires. Um, yeah, and really today we're just going to get this scanned and then I'll go back and clean it all up and get this, the files over to Chris. Now time to get the subframes out. This is gonna be fun, isn't it? Oh, that was quick. I do love the MX-5, but now I hate it just a little bit. Now this might not be the correct way of doing it, but it's definitely the easiest and quickest way of doing it. Whether uh, Powerflex would agree, I don't know, but whether you guys would agree, please let me know in the comments. Everything's always better with fire. Apply a little bit of pressure with the press but not enough to uh, flex the arm. So now it's time for the really messy bit, 
cleaning down all the arms, subframes, etc., ready for me to underseal and paint them. Now, ideally, you'd get this shot battered and powder coated, but with the virus, we haven't got that option at the moment. So it's time to do it the old fashioned way. Let's get started then, I suppose. Not even halfway through yet. the arms are now done, being cleaned up, primered, good couple of coats of paint, should last for quite a few years to come. Next up on these is fitting the Paraflex bushes, but we'll do that in episode three. I've still got loads of work to do on the subframes and all the other bits, which I'm going to crack on with. Right now, we're going to head upstairs, see Josh, and have a look at the 3D CAD stuff he's been getting on with. designers here at Zero EV. Um, we use Fusion 360, which is probably the most cost-effective CAD yeah, system so, out there. Yeah. Um, and it's also free for personal use slash DIYers, so it's perfect for you if you want to get into CAD and start learning the systems. Fusion is a really good one for that. And it's brilliant for a company because it is way more cost-effective than the rivals on the market, shall we say. Oh yeah, you're not wrong. Um, it's quite good as well because the, the, the team's aspects, I think, is really helpful. So like with our other engineers here, we can uh, bounce ideas off each other, whether one of them's working from home or if we're in your work, one's in the workshop, we can, I can literally do a design, save it, then the, the other chaps in the workshop or whatever can pull it up on their computer straight away and it's, it's really handy for, for, for that respect of, let's say, you can just quickly upload it to the cloud and the next person's got it and you can, again, just bounce ideas off each other. and. Provide our internet works. Yeah, provide our internet works. That's, uh, a good, uh, that's one battle we do have sometimes, but no, it's it's really good. Like I say, definitely considering the price point compared to, say, SolidWorks or yeah. Katia or something it's, like that. It's, it's crazy. Um, so I suppose, just want to have a look through, I suppose, with you, how you start doing yeah. the conversion. Yeah. Where do you start with it? So you've got, you've now had the design in from Will to scan. Yeah. Um, so I'm presuming from this point, what we normally do is put all the items in, to your, yeah. your, your CAD program, and then you start placing everything where possible. Yeah, no, exactly that. Um, so what we do is, we'll, like, depends if Will has or we've asked for, we, we do a little bit of clean up of the scan. Um, so we'll, we'll just clean up any artifacts that it's just not necessary, so it just makes it run a bit smoother. Um, but then, like I say, we're, we have like the, the module design, um, so we'll pull in all the mod battery modules, the charges, things like that, um, which will then used for, to just get a rough idea to start with of, for what space we've got to work with. Um, and we can see, to be fair, Mazda's done a really good job of engine-based space. It's like the old, the old minis, how surprisingly how big, much, how much space you actually get in such a small car. Yeah. Um, you can, we can actually fit quite a bit in there, so which is quite nice. And again, just pull everything in to start with just to see what we've got to work with, really. Okay, so if we look a little bit closer now into, yeah. the, uh, into the design, yeah. And we'll have a mess around your computer. I'm trying to keep my distance from uh, Josh a bit. Yeah. It's going to be just out of shot, shall we say. Yeah. Um, so this is the scan that we got from Will. Yeah. Uh, Josh has dropped in battery box. Uh, on the top there you've got the Orion battery management system and a couple of other bits. And underneath I think he's got, what have we got, charger? Charger, you've got the controller for the motor. Um, so if we have a quick look underneath, you've got the motor, the um, controller and cooling plate. Um, we have modelled up the prop shaft as well, just uh, which is actually runs off the, the same length as the standard prop. Um, so we just 
just again, just to get motor location, so roughly where it would be. Um, we've got our single speed um, reduction gearbox. Um, so again, this is just purely just to see what space we've got to work with, and then we can. The next step will be final location um, and making start making mounts and things like that off of existing existing bolts. Again, our our big aim is not to cut anything, not to damage the car in any way, so it is all reversible. Um, so again, we'll just make mounts off of the standard gearbox mount. Um, battery box things like the battery box mounts will um, will pick up off of things like the engine mounts, um, things like that. So the scan is really good. Again, it's just it's space management uh, things. What we got to clear. Um, so we'll turn the battery box back on. Um, you can see things like we've got the roll bar, anti roll bar to contend with. Um, so if we zoom in under here, it all clears that. Um, it's just yeah, it's just space management again. Battery box design is not 100%. But we know where, where we've got to work with um, and just sort of between a few of us will bounce ideas off where we want things for ease of maintenance, if there is any needed, ease of fitment, um, just, just things like that and ease of access so it's, it's all being about user friendly as well. So we steering rack wise we're clear, that's yeah. normally one of our biggest issues in yeah, most yeah. of the builds we do is the steering rack or the steering box yeah. ends up getting in the way but looking at that you seem to have plenty of clearance. Yeah we've, we've got plenty of room. We're gonna, well, um, we're gonna. Uh, design such a way it can be built on our battery jig downstairs. Yeah. So, so it'll all be built, pre built, boxed, sealed as a high voltage yeah. unit and then dropped in. Just dropped there's, in. There's no building of anything within yeah. the vehicle. It can all be pressure tested for the coolant system as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. And all that stuff. Fine. Fine. So we've, we've got uh, our, our own jigs that we use for other projects that we, we can adapt with a few different plates that we'll literally be able to build coolant plates, the modules on, everything ready to go. Um, and literally it'll just be all you'll have to do is take it off our build jig lower it into the car and bolt it into place. Yeah. So, so in theory with this car we'll have <laughs> probably motor control and motor gearbox mounted to one plate that will go yeah. in as a piece and we'll have battery box with the DC to DC by the looks of that and possibly yeah. the charger on the bottom of it yeah. maybe depending how it's laid out and uh, that will drop so, in as one. So we'll have the DC to DC and the, the BMS will be effectively like a sub assembly with a battery box so that will go in as one and then what we'll plan on doing is under here um, so this so the controller the cooling plate um, and then you will have um, the charger block that will come up under. They will come up as separate units, but this will be. So we'll probably we're we're not 100% on design yet, but so this will probably come up with the motor. Um, maybe again we're not fully fully set on that, but that will be a sub assembly. So again, it just makes install a lot easier. So you're not have to bolt on seven, eight different things. It will just go up as one assembly. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, cool. Thanks for your time, Josh. No Thank you for watching episode 2. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below if you want to. On the next episode I'm going to be fitting the Powerflex bushes and rebuilding all the subframes whilst doing some work on the underside of the car because yes it's an MX-5 it has some rust. Josh is going to be doing some more CAD design and we're probably going to start cutting some brackets on the CNC plasma cutting machine and test fitting them to the vehicle. So I'll see you soon.